Then they tell the kids, well, DNA is pretty tiny, but that proves evolution. That's what this textbook says. We have evidence of evolution from molecular biology. Darwin speculated all forms of life are related. This speculation has been verified. They are lying to your kids. Nothing about DNA has helped with the evolution theory at all. DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, is the most complex molecule in the universe. Unbelievably complicated molecule. That little DNA molecule, average person has 50 trillion cells in their body with 46 of those little molecules in each cell. 46 chromosome strands in each cell of your body. If you extracted all of it, it would only fill about two tablespoons. But if you took those DNA strands and unwound them, <coughs> stretched them out, tied them together, one person's DNA would reach from Earth to the moon and back over half a million times. Round trips to the moon. They say the DNA holds more, compute, more information than all computer programs ever written by man combined. IBM models the newest computers after DNA. The quantity of information is so vast, we have to invent new numbers to measure it. Not terabytes, petabytes, or exabytes, yottabytes, and zettabytes. All the words uttered by everyone who ever lived would amount to five exabytes. And your DNA and your chromosome holds more information than that? It is so unbelievably complex. If you typed out the code found in your DNA, when you got done typing, you'd have enough books to fill Grand Canyon 78 times. That's the instructions to make you. I'd say you're pretty special. Quite a list of instructions to make you. David said, I will praise thee, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And he didn't have a, he didn't have a microscope, and he could figure that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, from conception to birth, the baby adds 15,000 cells per minute to its body. Each one is more complicated than a space shuttle. How would you like to, like to be in charge of the supply end, of supplying a factory that is producing 15,000 space shuttles a minute? And it's your job to make sure they have all the nuts and bolts and screws and everything they need to put that thing together. Some of you women are saying, boy, I did it, and that's hard, too. Sometimes they want pickles in the middle of the night, you know. <laughs> what are you building down there anyway, you know? Uh, <clears throat> the probability of one DNA happening by chance has been calculated to be 1 in 10 to the 119,000th power. That's a big number when you figure the entire visible universe is about 10 to the 28th inches in diameter. DNA has not proven anything that would help the evolution theory. It's been made the problem much, much, much worse. But let's just assume that the chromosome number means something and that, you know, it, it could evolve. Okay, well, then I did some research on this. I discovered penicillin has two chromosomes. That one had to evolve first. And then slowly over millions of years, they got some more chromosomes, because they're complicated, you know, and turned into a fruit fly. You can see the similarity there. It's only got eight chromosomes. And then very slowly, it evolved some more chromosomes and became either a tomato or a house fly. Very tough to tell the difference. They're identical twins, you know. And then very slowly over millions of years, it evolved into either a pea or a bee. You can see the similarity there, you know, pea, bee, very similar and slowly became lettuce and then a carrot and finally when we got to 22 chromosomes, triplets. The possum, the redwood tree and the kidney bean all have 22 chromosomes. Average scientists cannot tell them apart. <laughs> let's see, which one is which here? Okay, let's see, tree, possum, bean, huh. Uh, and we have 46, folks. And if we can just get two more, the next step of human evolution, we're going to become a tobacco plant. I know some already smell like it. Sometimes I'll get on the elevator and I'll say, man, you're evolving. You're way ahead of me. <laughs> and it probably won't happen in my lifetime, but we might get enough chromosomes someday to be either a dog or a chicken. They're twins too, you know. And then way down the road, you know, we're going to become a carp. They got double the chromosomes we do. And someday, star date 34, 95, 72, we're going to become a fern. I was at a church one time and this lady walked up to me afterwards and she said, Mr. Hoven, I'm fern. I shook hands with that hand right there. I'll never wash it again. Hey, <laughs> how come the evolutionists are always comparing things that fit their theory? Why don't they show us the things that don't fit their theory? Like, let's just say we're going to examine how things evolve based upon how long they lived. Well, we could arrange animals by how long they live, and we'll find out the hamster evolved first, slowly turned into a cat, and then a canary, and then a dog, and then a chimpanzee, and an alligator, elephant, horse, turtle, and human. We made it, folks. We made it. Let's, uh, 
let's ex arrange the animals based on how long they're pregnant, their gestation period. Well, in that case, the possum, only 13 days. How'd you like that, ladies? Only be pregnant for 13 days. Not bad, huh? Yeah, I'd have a bunch of kids in. Uh, slowly evolved into a hamster, then a rat, then a rabbit, kangaroo, on down the list, and the elephant. 640 days. They are the winner. The most evolved creature on earth. Or maybe you can see here the cat and the dog are identical twins, you know. Maybe we should uh, arrange them based on how much they weigh in their adult form. Well, the shrew only weighs four grams. Slowly it became a mouse. And very slowly, slowly, over billions of years, became a whale. The whale's the most evolved now. Why don't they show us these charts, huh? And why is it that amphibians have five times more DNA than mammals and some amoeba have a thousand times more DNA? They don't tell us these things because it doesn't fit their theory. It's impossible to arrange in any sort of evolutionary series based on just one little bit of facts. You better find all the facts. You find out this evolution theory fails miserably. But they tell the kids, we're going to think critically, boys and girls. There are 20 kinds of amino acids. That's a fact. Explain how this fact supports the idea that all life shares a common ancestor. How's a Christian kid supposed to answer that for homework for Monday? Hmm? Don't you see a built-in assumption in this question? That's not learning to think critically. Would the kid be allowed, teacher, to explain how this fact that they all have 20, all life forms have 20 amino acids, would the kid be allowed to say, maybe that proves the intelligence of a common designer? Maybe God gave all the animals the same basic 20 amino acids so that uh, we, could, we don't have to just eat each other, you know? I mean, if they're all totally different, wildly different kinds, then we could, we could only eat other humans. But see, God made it this way so the brown cow can eat the green grass and give the white milk and make the yellow butter, and I eat it and get the blonde hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe that's why there's all the same basic building blocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the lies they face in the textbooks is this idea that all these similarities prove a common ancestor. Well, let's pretend that it does, okay? This textbook says, humans and orangutans are 96% similar, proving a common ancestor 15 million years ago. I don't think so. Humans and chimps have thousands of differences, thousands of differences. Overall, this guy says, the genetic difference is only 1.6%. Oh, that's what they used to think, but that's a lie. Barney Maddox was the leading genome researcher on this project. He said the genetic difference between human and chimpanzee is at least 1.6%. That doesn't sound like much, but calculated out, that's a gap of 48 million nucleotides. And a change of only three nucleotides is fatal to an animal. He said it's not going to happen. That's when they thought the difference was 1.6%. It's still too big of a gap. Now then, later they found out, oh, actually it's a 95% similarity, which is 5% difference. And just recently they said, oh, no, wow, look at this. It's 7.7% difference. The difference, the more we study about this, the worse the problem gets for the evolutionist. Actually, it's becoming worse by the day. This result is based on only 1 million DNA bases out of 3 billion. They've only analyzed one three thousandth of the human DNA code. A very small percent has actually been analyzed. French and American scientists have mapped chromosome 14, the longest sequence to date, and the site of more than 60 disease genes. The feat enlisted nearly 100 researchers and marks the fourth of the 24 human chromosomes mapped so far. If somebody tells you they have mapped the entire human genome, you tell them Kent Hovind said they're mistaken or they're lying. Okay, they've only mapped a small percentage, okay? Then it says, uh, the French National uh, Sequencing Center said the chromosome is, compared, is comprised of more than 87 million pairs of DNA, all of which have been sequenced, so the chromosome's map includes no gaps. This is the longest piece of contigu contiguous DNA sequenced. 87 million pairs, a fraction of the total 3 billion pairs found in the human genome. They still don't know how much there's in there, and it's already 7.7% difference. This researcher said, human genome is littered with up to 20,000 pseudogenes. That proves evolution. I get this in debates all the time. They'll say, what about the pseudogenes? I said, there's no such thing. They said, well, yeah, there is. There are thousands of pseudo, which means a false gene. It doesn't do anything. Oh, no. Those pseudogenes serve several purposes. Number one, they serve as decoys to draw you know, poisons away from the real ones. Number two, they serve as backup mechanism. It's like your computer has an automatic backup. You know, if a piece of the memory gets destroyed, another one of those pseudogenes jumps right in, takes over. No, there's not. They took out some of the pseudogenes to see what would happen. They said, well, the mouse doesn't need these things. Let's take them out. And there's how they turned out. 
They were deformed terribly. No such thing as a pseudogene. The pseudogene may function as a decoy to lure away destructive enzymes, Discover Magazine of 03. We could spend all day on DNA sequencing, but, you know, it could be. We have similar DNA to other animals because we have the same designer. You know, similar bridges would have similar blueprints, wouldn't they? Similar cars would have similar instructions on how to build them, how to make them. 